boys and girls, students of Buddhist Sunday School, parents, grandparents, teachers of Sunday School and moral education. May you all be well and peaceful. Now for today's lesson, we are going to do a presentation of a fictitious story, a story of the imagination titled War Among Fingers. Even though it is a fictitious story or story that is fiction or of the imagination, there are many important moral lessons and Dharma messages or Dharma teachings that you can learn. So let us see what this story is all about and what Dharma points we can learn. So let us now launch the PowerPoint. Okay. Now you can see the cover slide. War among fingers. You know the fingers in the hands, all right? You have four fingers and one thumb, or sometimes we say five fingers, and of the five fingers, one is a thumb. This is the thumb. This is the four finger. Or on your feet, you have the toes. On your hands, you have the fingers. So we have this story titled War Among Fingers. Now let us see what is this war all about. Now let us go to the next slide. There was a war between the four fingers and the thumb of a hand. Now you have, as I said just now, four fingers and a thumb. Ah. Each of them was hot arguing. Each of them was hot arguing. Saying what? I am the most important and grand. Ah, so very proud, huh? Each of the fingers is feeling very proud and important. He or she uh, thinks that he or he is the greatest. Or you can say it. Lah. Uh, it is the greatest, most important. Now let us see why each of them is arguing. The thumb. Uh, you know this is the thumb, right? Now uh, the thumb. The thumb said, I am the anchor. You know my might. Without me, can you ever hold a pen to write? Now, you know, an anchor, uh, for example, the ship anchored into the port. So there is a, you know, an anchor, a heavy metal device uh, that can, you know, tie the ship onto a pole or to make it stable and firm on the place. So you anchor on the place means you make yourself or you stabilize in that place, uh, the anchor. Uh, so the thumb said, you know, I am the anchor, the most mighty, strongest. And then it says, without me, can you ever hold a pen to write? Uh, you can see the picture, uh, a person using the hand to write. Now, without the thumb, of course, it will be very difficult to write, isn't it? Now, you see, this is the thumb, right? But actually, the other fingers are also important, let, let us see. But he's so proud uh, uh, that he is the most important, the greatest, the most grand. You know what it says for the... You give the thumbs up when things go on well. I'm really lord over you, did I tell? Ah, thumbs up. Ah, like for example, ah, you say A1, A1, then you show out your thumbs, isn't it? Ah, like this, ah, like this. Right? Thumbs up means very good, excellent. You see? You won't show your last finger, isn't it? Ah. So you show the thumb, you see, you see how important you use me, the thumb, when you say A1, excellent, very good. 
when you show your thumbs up. That means everything is going on smoothly, right? We have done a good job. So I am the Lord over you, did I tell. You can see each of the two lines uh, bears a rhyming, uh, well tell, right? So it reads nicely. Later on, you can also try to read on your own. Uh, so this thumb has given its arguments why it is the greatest. Now let us see what happens next. Now this is the index finger, right? The pointer or the finger that points. Now you see, counting from your thumb, it is the second, right? I think you know, you can see actually very easy. Huh? Uh, this is the thumb, now this is the index finger or the pointer. So this pointer, he gets angry. Huh? Uh, he says, he disagrees and he shouts loudly. So the index finger disagreed and shouted loudly, I am the king. I am the pointer. Don't you all see? Ah, so you see, he thinks that he is the greatest because he is the pointer. Now you point at somebody, usually you use the index finger, isn't it? You don't use a little finger to point, right? So you point at uh, that finger, the pointer. Uh, point at something. Say, now can you see that? Uh, so you are using a pointer. The index finger. So you see, he is the greatest, lah. Ah, uh, he's the greatest. Uh, you can see the picture, lah, quite easy, isn't it? Right. Then he goes on further to argue. What does he say? I am the finger that shows authority. I point and command people obey me. I just, you know, he's thinking this is my commanding finger. Right, like commander, captain, and all. Say, hey, you come here. So you use your index finger to point out, you come here. You don't use your little finger and say, you come here, and then show your little finger, isn't it? You don't do that. You say, I point and command, people obey me. You say, all of you come here. I use my index finger to point, and all the people will come. Right, so he thinks he's the greatest, lah. the one in command, the one that has authority. Uh, people respect because he thinks that he is the pointer and one of authority. Uh, so now let us see Whoa. the middle finger and the others listening to the other two. No. So the middle finger quickly shot out and yelled, I'm the tallest of you all. Now you can see, isn't it? Right? The thumb, index finger, then you have the middle finger. When you put all together, you find the middle finger is the tallest, isn't it? Right? The shortest, of course, will be the thumb and then the little finger. So the middle finger thinks is the most grand uh, is the tallest. And he says, standing beside me, you all look so lowly and small. Now, you see this? So he's thinking he's the middle finger. Now right? you can see here. Yeah? Ah, he says, I'm the tallest. Now you all place beside me. Uh, one, two, three, four, thumb, index finger, then you would this finger, then a little finger. All shorter than me. So, I am the greatest. Ah, then, you know, who is next? The middle finger. Still hasn't finished, you know. Right? He still wants to say, I am most elegant, dignified, and majestic in look. Ah, is it? You see? I am the tallest. I, I look so majestic like a king. Elegant. All right? The people must respect me and honor me because I am the tallest. All of you are shorter. And the middle finger had never felt so important and good. He thinks that he is the greatest. All right? He is the most important. 
Uh, by the way, look at this. Uh. So this is a cartoon finger where a person shows the middle finger. But I have to remind you, never do this. This is a bad sign. When somebody shows to another person the middle finger, it is actually uttering vulgar words, bad words, obscene, very insulting. And this is usually when the person gets very angry and starts cursing. Like you see, uh, one car overtakes the other car and the driver of the car being overtaken, very angry. So he puts out his hand and shows the other person the middle finger. Uh, this actually is vulgar, obscene, like bad word like this. Right? So never do this because it is regarded as very impolite and rude. Uh, people look down upon you uh, using bad sign. So that is this. But I this is just a cartoon to show you. This is the middle finger. All right. Ah, now is the turn of the other finger. This finger. So now we have finished the thumb, the index finger, the middle finger, and now comes to this finger, which we can call the engagement finger. Right? When the person gets engaged, or oh, there is this wedding ceremony and the couple exchanges rings. Huh? So where is the ring placed? At this finger, the engagement finger. And usually left hand, huh? usually, right? But the important thing is that by convention, it is usually placed here. Now you can have a look at your mother's engagement finger or your father's engagement finger. And in many cases, you will see the ring there. Uh, the ring of the engagement or the ring of the wedding. Uh, you put in this thumb, uh, people will laugh and say, oh, you put it a little finger. Uh, right? You know, it's not the usual way. But if the person just puts it for decoration, not as an engagement or wedding, uh, I suppose it is okay, la, fashion. But this is the engagement finger. The ring is placed there. So he was very proud. He's very proud. Say, hey, don't forget an engagement or wedding. The ring finger, you call it the ring finger, thundered amidst the great din. The great din means a great a lot of noise. La. You know, this is not the thumb, the index finger, the finger finger was shouting arguing. So all these fingers making a lot of noise. So the ring finger also shouted out, hey, don't forget an engagement or wedding. The ring finger thundered amidst the great noise. Understand? Okay. Now we go to the next one. And the ring finger continues with his argument. You know, he explains to the rest, rings, a symbol of importance are worn on me. Me, the ring finger is number one, certainly. So he uses the argument of wedding, marriage, engagement. Very important occasion in a person's life. So this ring finger feels so important that it's recognized. The ring is placed into that ring finger. So he says, I am the most important. A ring is a symbol of importance and it's worn on me. Uh. Not you are uh, thumb, not you are uh, index finger, not you are uh, middle finger. You think you're all very grand. Uh. No, I, the ring finger, is the greatest, the most important. Right? Now, let me one other finger, the last finger, we call the little finger. Uh, let's look. This is the little finger, you know, thumb, index finger, middle finger, ring finger, and now we come to the little finger. Oh, the little finger, uh, listening to all the arguments, uh, also wants to join in uh, and declare that he is the greatest. Other uh, fingers, uh, and the thumb, laughing at him, you uh, kichimayong, Huh? Well, you are the least important, uh, not to be outdone. 
doesn't want to lose. So the little finger shot out, right? Shot out. And he also shouted out, right? Put out his finger. I am the most important. He gave a loud shout, right? This one, right? That's of course the index finger. But you're talking about the little finger now. I am the most important. He gave a loud shout. Now let's see what he says. He says, when we all pray, who is the nearest to God? Who is the nearest? Look into your hands and see. Now, there's a diagram to explain this. All right? So this person, whatever religion, lah, he kneels down and he prays to his God. And you can see he collapses his hand lah, or folded palms. Lah, folded palms. And you can see the two palms placed together and he starts praying in the kneeling position. Thumb, index finger, middle finger, ring finger, and the little finger. He's praying to God somewhere there, you know, that's why he's looking there. He says, who is the nearest? Who is the nearest? Of course, me, the little finger is the nearest, right? So, I'm the most important, most significant, closest to God. Ah, he says, you can see now who is closest to the Lord. Who is closest to God? Ah, so now you can understand why I am the most important. I'm the greatest. Ah, so that's what he says. Now let us now look and see uh, what follows. Okay. Next. So now you have the hand. Uh, this is the hand. So in the hand, of course, you have the four fingers and the thumb. Now you can say five fingers, but of the five fingers, one is called the thumb. So the hand got annoyed you know, with all this quarreling, all this talk, all this conflict. Then the hand scolded all the fingers and the thumb. The hand got annoyed with all this talk. Why are you all so petty? He scolded a lot. You all argue over uh, stupid things, uh, little things which are not important and you don't understand important things of life. Uh, that's where you can see the Dhamma afterwards. Huh? You are also petty, uh, empty talk, right? arguing over little things. I'm the tallest, I point, uh, my uh, finger is closest to God. All these are little small talk. Useless, you people don't know how to think. No wisdom. Uh, so the hand scolded them. Then the hands started to teach, uh, to teach the good life lesson to the fingers and the thumb. And what does the hand say? Every one of you, small or big, short or long, is important in every way, right or wrong. Uh, he says that, uh, irrespective whether you are small or big, short or long, fat or thin, everyone is important. Uh, he plays a part. And then he explains, right? And of course, uh, this is a very good lesson afterwards we will examine. So, my dear friends, wherever you may be, Let's learn some lessons from this story. Of course, the hand explained to the fingers and the thumb that everyone is important. It plays a role. Imagine if you cut off one of the fingers or the thumb, then you become chat chat. And then it will affect your work. You can't use your hand properly, isn't it? Uh, to grasp a thing or to hold on things. Because one of the fingers or the thumb is missing. So everyone is important. He contributes. And all actually work together. Right? When you hold a pen like just now, all work together. So let us see the lessons that you can learn from. Now, let us do one by one. Right? Now the first one. See, 
do not be egoistic, proud, and boastful. It will lead you to suffering. Now, egoistic is actually also like proud, lah, sombong, conceited. A person who has a very big ego, right? Is a very proud person. He likes to boast. His thinking is very important. If you have this type of attitude, or you have an egoistic character, or a proud character, or a boastful character, people don't like you. And it will lead you to suffering. You clash with people, people quarrel with you, you cannot get a good job, your boss doesn't like you, in the class, your classmates don't like you, your teachers don't like you. So remember, must not be egoistic. It will lead you to suffering. Remember, there is this English proverb, pride goes before a fall. Isn't it? Pride. That's the noun, right? From the adjective, proud. If you have pride, you will fall one day. Ah, so pride goes before a fall. Now, that is the first lesson. That is good dhamma there, you know. Ah. Now, let us look at the Second one. Oh, we've gone to the, the third one. Now I can do the third one first. We are all interdependent and interconnected. We need one another for survival and peaceful living. You cannot be just a solitary single person living all by yourself. Isn't it? Right? We all depend on one another. Like, you know, you need food, you have the farmers to grow the fruit trees or the paddy or the wheat and so on, right? And then you go to the supermarket, you have so many types of goods, the goods all just don't come like this. There are people who are involved in that line who manufacture these goods and then you buy and you find life becomes very, very convenient, isn't it? Uh, and then you on your part, you may be a doctor or a nurse or a teacher, you also interact and work with other people. Each has a role to play, right? Otherwise, you can't really survive. You are just on your own, you live alone in an island, then you can't get some of the basic things. Uh, you will have problems, uh, right? Uh, so, we are all interconnected. Like for example, if you harm the environment, other living beings or you harm the plants, the trees, ah, then you find you get the bad effects coming. Uh, maybe erosion, landslide, right? Floods. Because we are interconnected and you disturb other living things. Then you get the bad effect. So remember this. So when you think back about the story, all the fingers actually must work together as a team, isn't it? They depend on each other for harmony, for carrying out the work and the functions of a hand properly. Uh, so you see that is this very important uh, message, right? Oh, we go to number four now. Uh, I think that's uh, something, uh, is, uh, never mind. In a society or community, we must cooperate and live in harmony. Yes, when you are working in a team or in your company or you are a person in the workforce of a factory or even in the classroom, right? You have to live in harmony. Otherwise, there will be a lot of trouble, conflicts, fights, right? And then uh, people will suffer, including you yourself. So remember, if you live in the community or the society or whatever, lah, you must have cooperation with other people, give and take, must have understanding. Ah, then you are a wise person. So you see how important it is. Huh? The individual who thinks that it's the most important and thinks the other people are not important is foolish, is immature. Right? Everybody is playing a role, isn't it? Ah, so that is this point that you can learn, right? Ah, conflicts, quarrels, and fights lead to suffering. Ah, of course, not. you know, just now, huh? you know, all uh, arguing, conflict, quarrel, and then uh, in, 
human society the same thing, right? Each person or each nation or each group of society thinks is the most is the most important. He wants to conquer other people or thinks is uh, a lot over the others. And when fights occur, you know, many people suffer. We should actually practice metta, loving kindness or compassion, karuna, and must understand other people, their contributions. They might have faults, just as you have faults also. You are not perfect, so they are not perfect, but they also do good things to contribute. So when you know how to think this way, then you can live more peacefully and in harmony with other people, isn't it? I don't know why this one doesn't come out surprising, right? Uh, now my helpers, we can... This actually, this second point is about being humble, right? Uh, being humble to practice humility. Even though you are very smart, intelligent, and also you have achieved many awards, you have won competition, do not feel proud. You, feel, you should feel humble, right? Even Einstein, such a great scientist, was full of humility, was so humble, right? So in this way, you know, people you interact with really like you and they relate well to you. They give their cooperation and you can be a leader among them in the team. Why? You are not the bossy, boastful, proud person, but you are full of humility, unassuming. Uh, so that is actually the second point. But suddenly it doesn't come out, it doesn't matter. So we can learn important lessons of life. And also there is Dharma all over, you see. Uh, the Dharma tells us that we must be humble, uh, not uh, egoistic. The ego is the cause of much suffering. Uh, the Dharma teaches this. And then also we must relate well with other people. We have metta, loving kindness because we are all interconnected, right? Uh, so, there's Dhamma there. And then, of course, for harmony, you live in harmony with other people, with the environment, where there is understanding. And you practice the Dhamma, there is wisdom. So, the wisdom tells you now how to relate well with others, how to live in harmony. So, you find uh, the Dhamma goes all over. Uh, and we know if you have fights, you have quarrels, right? You have anger, or, and then uh, worse still, uh, you kill. Uh, uh, this has bad karma. It generates bad karma. And there will be dukkha following. So you see, every of the five things uh, has dharma. It's dharma, actually. Right? But we just relate it to a, a story to make it more interesting of war among fingers. Right? So that is this. Summary of the lessons we can learn. Uh, so now we come to the end. So we make the aspiration. And by the way, you look at this uh, uh, picture or these graphics. Uh, this person, uh, uh, you know, when you want to invite somebody, you know, your body language is important. Uh, you are very polite. Oh, please come in. Uh, can you? Uh, you don't simply point directly at a, a, a person or show your fist and all this. Uh, the body language. So like, you know, in the Buddhist uh, culture, if you meet a Buddhist teacher or a monk or a nun, then you do the Anjali position, right? And, uh, you know, sometimes you say, oh, me, no, right? Or you just say, uh, good morning, Reverend, uh, good morning, Venerable. So you see, the hand position, important gesture, Anjali position, huh? full of, Understanding metta, ah, that sort of thing, right? Uh, so then, of course, uh, we put this animated uh, enlightened Buddha, the fully enlightened, to tell you that uh, he is the greatest, uh, the fully enlightened one, has taught the profound, most sublime Dhamma. And the Dhamma is the most important thing, isn't it? All our presentation actually the objective is to teach you some Dhamma. Uh, and look at this picture actually. I like this picture because uh, you can count and see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Isn't it? Right? So you have uh, like eight bundles like this, you know, or the eight uh 
they call it spokes of near that number, which can represent the noble eightfold path, right? And each one of it has four, no, right? Has four uh, longish things uh, like fingers, uh. Uh, they can represent the, uh, the four noble truths. The most important teaching of the Buddha actually is the four noble truths. And then in the four noble truths, the eight noble part. Uh, the eight, the eight noble, the noble eightfold part, right? In the four noble truths, you have this the part that will lead you to nibbana, fully enlightened. So that's why you find this uh, like this this the picture. So Make the aspiration, right? That we also hope that you will learn the Dharma diligently. And after learning, you will be put into practice. And you must not just do for one or two months after that, bye-bye. And many people like that, you know, they were attending Sunday school. But when they grew up, they really caught up in all those things uh, which uh, do not really bring benefit to you finally. I play too much of those arcade games, aimless chit-chatting, uh, shopping, right? A lot of those things are uh, overdoing, you find, can harm your mind. Whereas in the Dhamma, right, all the while you learn uh, gradually, steadily, then later on, when you are older, you find the benefits a lot. But very sad to say, uh, many uh, who were in our Sunday school and Dhamma you can have already said bye bye to Dhamma already. One day they will regret. All right, they have given up the most important treasure, the most precious thing they have left aside. And one day they will be glad. So I hope it doesn't happen to you. That's why I take trouble to present to you uh, different presentations to highlight the Dharma points. So if you learn the Dharma diligently, right, you will then be more peaceful and happy. All right, because good things arise in your mind. You have understanding, you have wisdom. You can face with problems better and you know how to solve the problems better. Isn't it? Uh, when there is understanding, wisdom, then your mind is a very, very rich mind. Can solve problems, can be peaceful and calm and happy. Uh, so these are the messages from this presentation. Uh, so to conclude, I would like to thank all of you uh, students, teachers, parents and grandparents who have taken time to view this presentation and to listen to the Dhamma and reflect on it. And we hope you will continue striving in the Dhamma. And may you all be well and peaceful. So we conclude by saying Sadhu three times. Sadhu, Sadhu. Sad.